Wrestling has changed a lot through the years, for better or for worse. From wrestling attires, promos, TV, right down to the ring and stage setup, a lot has happened. And some of us have been lucky enough to have witnessed some of these very changes. What about some of the things we haven't been able to see for ourselves? Like wrestling moves, the cool stuff. Welcome to Wrestling Through the Ages. A lot of the wrestling moves we see today, we take for granted. We've seen them before. It's nothing new. But did you know that those very slams, locks, holds, and vaults used to be original and new, more often than not even being that talent's ending to a match, a finish, or more simply put, a finisher. Anyway, enough of my old-timey blabbering. Let's get right into the series of maneuvers. Although Jake the Snake Roberts mentions he created the DDT by applying a standing front face lock on his opponent to which his foe stepped on his feet, to which Roberts promptly fell backwards, thus accidentally inventing the famed finisher. This is not the case. Mexican luchador Black Gordman created the move back in the late 60s, early 70s. Made famous by the likes of The Dynamite Kid, Bam Bam Bigelow, Chris Benoit, this dangerous move was invented in the early 70s by accident when Harley Race climbed up to the top turnbuckle and fumbled his footing, falling off headfirst towards his foe lying on the canvas below. Harley has gone on record stating he wished he never created the aerial maneuver with the dark clouds surrounding the Flying Headbutt's ongoing controversy. Probably one of the most used maneuvers next to the suplex and body slam, the power bomb is an excellent way to finish a match, and fast. During my childhood years, I recall big men like Diesel, Sid Justice, Vader, utilizing this move to end matches. And then during the 90s, wrestlers like Scott Norton, Mike Awesome, Adam Bomb, Kawada, and then the 21st century would see the likes of The Undertaker, Batista, Owens, and Wardlow. Created by accident, wrestling superstar Lou Fez attempted to pile drive Antonino Roca. Roca lifted his head in an attempt to get out of the pile driver, which Lou Fez then countered by slamming Antonino on his back. This would have been at the tail ends of 1949 combination of both a suplex and a body slam, the Jackhammer was made famous by a three-minute wonder, Goldberg, during his undefeated reign in WCW. But other wrestlers were using it before Goldberg. D. Malenko, Billy Gunn, and Bruiser Brody. But the move was actually created by Japanese legend Jaguar Yokota in early 1980s. Here in North America, depending what year you were born, this move was either on or off the banned or do not perform list. Made famous by Jerry the King Lawler, Terry Funk, Paul Orndorff, Buddy Rogers, and Harley Race, this move was notorious for injuring talent and has spawned more variations than an early 70s camper van. The pile driver was invented by wrestling legend Bill Longson in the mid to late 1930s. Attempting a jumping backflip is risky and dangerous. Now add climbing up four feet and a half and attempting to backflip onto your opponent. Challenge accepted. These have been around since I started watching in the 80s and still look amazing to this day. Leaping Lanny Poffo utilized the maneuver. The great Muta popularized it. But facts are facts and Eddie's older brother, Mando Guerrero, is credited for creating the amazing vaulting backflip press in the early 70s. The Death Valley Driver, a modified standing fireman carry drop driver. It is said that the move was created by Japanese icon Kotetsu Yamamoto during the late 1970s. All Japan women's pro wrestling star Etsuko Mita innovated the maneuver in the early 1980s. But here in North America, dangerous finishing move was exposed in the mid-90s by none other than Perry Saturn in WCW. 
Louis Piccoli in ECW, or The Godfather in the late 90s in WWF. Years before DDP patented it as the Diamond Cut, and 16 years before Randall rebranded it as the RKO, John Laurinaitis, known at the time as Johnny Ace, invented the iconic cutter back in 1987 as the Ace Crusher during an All Japan Pro Wrestling series event inside Korokun Hall. A acrobatic aerial strike, this never started off as a wrestling move. To put it simply, this is a double forward dive. It's a hell of a astonishing flying spin to begin with. Made famous nowadays by, well, everyone. But back in the 90s, only a select few could pull this off. Juventud Guerrera, Billy Kidman, Hayabusa, John Cronus, Aguila, and the move pusher itself, Too Cold Scorpio. Too Cold Scorpio has spoken about this recently, how he came up with a maneuver by accidentally over-rotating while flipping inside the ring during an entrance. But as it stands, Scott Steiner has a recorded footage that dates back to 1987 showing that Big Papa Pump was their hookup. I'm sure everyone here already knows everything there is to know about the stunner. That popular face lock jawbreaker finisher. Michael P.S. Hayes mentions he came up with a maneuver but could not perform it due to having recent back surgery. Jimmy Garvin was Hayes' stand-in, and in 1994, he performed the 911 on Johnny B. Bad. Thanks for joining me on a finishing move history class. I actually learned quite a bit myself. Moves you'd like to see me cover in the future? Let me know in the comments below. As always, thanks for your ongoing support. Like, share, subscribe, and I'll see you next Friday for another episode of Wrestling Through the Ages.